Okay, good evening. Uh, we are now on roll 15 on uh, motion. motion. So, what is a, a motion? Well, actually, a motion is an application for relief. For relief in a judicial proceeding other than those stated in the pleading. Why other than those stated in, in the pleading? Because in our pleading, like for instance, the initiatory pleading of a complaint or a petition, there is already a prayer. First one, a specific prayer. What relief are you asking for to be resolved by the court or to be decided by the court? And in your answer, you also have a relief prayed for specific prayer or particular prayer and a general prayer so if you are asking for relief if a litigant is asking for relief in court other than those stated already in the pleading specifically i mentioned in the prayer then it is called a motion so a relief other than those already asked for in a pleading the general rule is that all motions shall be in writing but uh, in the course of the proceeding or you are in court suddenly a lawyer will ask for a relief that is a motion there is no need of putting the motion in writing it shall be done orally so any relief asked for by a litigant during the trial or in the course of the proceeding need not be in writing obviously not in writing orally done okay so and uh, once a motion is already submitted in court the court the court in open court like motion for postponement suddenly asked for by a litigant or a counsel then it shall be resolved by the court in open, in open court. When? Immediately. So if a counsel is asking for a resetting or a postponement or say a continuance of the direct examination or cross examination, that, that is a motion and it should be resolved by the court. Generally, right now, if you will ask for a continuance, your honor, we move for a continuance on what ground for lack of material time well in general that that should be denied by the court because in criminal proceeding or procedure as well as in civil procedure our role now adopts what the continuous trial role so the cross the direct examination as well as the cross examination should be completed in one day so general role a motion for continuance or postponement or resetting of the direct examination or cross-examination shall be denied. Of course, there are cases that your motion for continuance may be, may be granted by the court. I repeat, this kind of motion is done orally. Why not in writing? Because it is done in the course of the trial and the court shall resolve it immediately no deferment of the resolution is allowed okay but uh, of course even if the court should uh, resolve it immediately the adverse party shall also be given the opportunity to argue his or opposition like for instance council is asking for a continuance the opposing party, you, you will usually object. We object, Your Honor. We are now adopting the one-day examination rule. I see. So perhaps why he is asking for continuance, obviously the counsel may not be ready or the witness is not ready to continue with the, the direct or the cross-examination. So in general, right now, in civil action, in criminal action, it should be denied. Okay, but it can be granted at the discretion of the court. What matters is that the adverse, the adverse party, meaning the opposing party, 
should be given the opportunity to argue or to be heard. Okay. Now, motions that are in writing is hearing necessary. We, we mentioned a while ago that even a motion orally done, the adverse parties are, shall be afforded the opportunity to argue. Well, with more reason if it is a motion in writing. So he should be given an opportunity to argue his side. And if you are asked, is hearing of a motion necessary? Answer would be, yes, according to the rules of court. When the motion is based not on facts appearing on the record of the case. So the court may conduct hearing. But again, take note that this hearing is discretionary on the part of the court. What is mandatory is that the opposing party is given the opportunity to argue or to, to be heard. Okay, so, so since there will be a hearing, the court may conduct a hearing. How will the court, if you are asked, how will the court hear on the written motion? If you can recall your rules on evidence, the provision, what is the evidence on motion? Meaning what evidence should accompany your motion? Of course, the affidavits. Because remember that in a motion, you are asking for a relief from the court. So, you have to convince the court that uh, your motion should be granted. And how, you, how can you convince it? Through the affidavit of the complainant or, the, or his witnesses. And of course, if the movement already secured the modes of discovery, like a deposition, then he can attach the deposition to support his motion. To support his motion to convince the court that his motion shall be granted. But uh, the opposing party may also submit his own affidavit or deposition. Remember deposition last time? Uh, uh, remember, no, remember deposition? Deposition, it is a mode of discovery and that deposition can be used to, why? By, by the proponent, but not only by the proponent, but even by the adverse party. Okay? So, but uh, suppose an affidavit or affidavits were submitted, including depositions. You are the judge. You are the judge. Can you still conduct hearing? And aside from the affidavit submitted and require the parties to submit oral testimonies. Yes. The court, despite the submission of an affidavit, and of an affidavit or a deposition, the court is not precluded by the rules of court to conduct or, or require the party to present oral testimony. Okay, so, so remember that uh, a motion is a prayer asking for relief. So there must be a prayer asking what is the relief so to be obtained. And uh, relief is nothing without on what grounds you are asking for relief. On what grounds? So you have to state the grounds. And those grounds, as we mentioned earlier, can be supported by what shall it support? The affidavit. So the motion shall be supported by the affidavit of witnesses, other papers, and even uh, a deposition. Now, there is a new amendment in the rules of court. A good one. Because prior to the amendment, lawyers in court, this is happening in court before, G -g lawyers will be guessing or speculating, is this a litigious motion or non-litigious non motion? Actually, when I was a power lawyer in Pasig City, a new one, I, I heard some lawyers saying litigious. No, Your Honor, this is a litigious motion. No, non-litigious. So I was wondering, oh, what is 
what are they arguing for really? Well, I was new in court. I really, we, we need to learn so much in court. So this problem before is now solved. Why? Because the new rules of court enumerates what are non-litigious motions and what are litigious motions. So the problem of lawyers, including the courts, regarding what are non-litigious motions and litigious motions is, are now solved. So when we say non-litigious motion, it means a motion filed by the, by the movement in which the court may act on it without prejudice on the rights of the adverse party. So the, when a motion is granted, it will not prejudice the adverse party. So the adverse party in non-litigious motion need not even be given the opportunity to be heard for after all, it will not prejudice him. So that is a non-litigious motion. So as I mentioned a while ago, the rules of court now specify what are non-litigious motion. So for instance, the complainant files a motion for the issuance of an alias summon. Mm -hmm. Is it a non-litigious motion? Or why are you filing the issuance of an alias motion? Why? In our, in our discussion last time, the plaintiff is uh, authorized or delegated by the court to issue someone. Why? Because the witness, because no, because the defendant is residing in Batanga City, meaning outside the national capital judicial region where the civil action is instituted. So under the new rule, the court may delegate to the plaintiff to serve the someone. Where? In Batanga City. So eh, as we mentioned last time, if if the summon was lost or destroyed, so the remedy of uh, the plaintiff is to file a motion for the issuance of an alias motion. So question, is it a non-litigious motion? Yes, non-litigious. It will not prejudice the defendant, the opposing party, if ever it will be granted by the court. Why not prejudice? Remember, there is no summon yet. The adverse party will never be prejudiced. Why? Because the court has not yet acquired jurisdiction over the over his person. Because the summon is still where? Is still answered. And in fact, it was lost or destroyed. So the court will grant it. Grant for the issuance of an alias summon. Another one, which is a non-litigious motion. For instance, you are the counsel for the defendant, okay? In the 30 calendar days within which to file an answer is about to lapse, okay? What will you do, Mr. Counsel, to protect the interest of your client? It would be highly improbable, if not impossible, for you to prepare a good answer, an effective answer for your client, the defendant, what will you do, counsel? You have to file a motion for extension of time to file answer. This is a non-litigious motion. Why? Why not? We, well, so long as the motion for extension of time to file an answer is justified under certain circumstances, like if there is physical inability the part of the council to prepare uh, the, the answer. Why? For what reason? Because the client then, after receiving the summon, was hospitalized. So he was unable to communicate with his lawyer, to give to the lawyer the summon, including the complaint and other documents. So there is no time really available right now. So how many days? Only two days within which to file an answer. So the remedy of the defendant, the defending the counsel for the defendant, if you're the counsel, is to file 
a motion for extension of time to file answer. This is a non-litigious motion, right? So the plaintiff, the plaintiff need not be given an opportunity to argue, to oppose the motion for extension of time to file an answer. Also, motion for postponement is a non-litigious motion. But you will note that uh, motion for postponement under the new rule is actually a prohibited pleading. That is the general rule. It is prohibited. But uh, what, is a prohibit what is prohibited by the rules of court on postponement are postponement which are intended to delay the proceeding, meaning dilatory postponement that is prohibited. So what are the motion for postponement that are allowed under the rules of court? So do not fear, you have to file a motion for postponement. So long as what? The reason for the postponement is for what? Because of acts of God. Well, I do not know our legal circle it has been customarily uh, saying an act of God. Sanay na tayo ng ganyan, pero sa akin, parang hindi naman maganda acts of God. Why not say acts of nature? Pero yun ang kinala, kinatandaan ng mula ng unang kapanahon pa, may kasalanan pa si God. Si God. Another one is force major. And another one is the physical inability of the witness to testify in court. Under those circumstances, the client or the counsel may file a motion for postponement. And I repeat, this is a non-litigious motion. Thus, the opposing party need not be need not be given an opportunity to argue. But you will note that if a motion for postponement is done orally in court, chances are, chances are that the opposing par party will object. Chan hindi naman lahat. Minsan, bihira naman nag-object ang mga lawyer dyan. <laughs> Anong sasabihin ng kabila? Well, you know, objection, Your Honor. We, we, we joined the manifestation. Ang <laughs> mga sinasabi, eh, gusto rin nila mapopostpon. Gusto rin eh. So still done. But, well, anyway, under the new rule, this is a non-litigious motion. All right, another one, which is a classi which is classified as a non-litigious motion, is a motion for the issuance of a writ of execution. You will note that uh, the winning party, the prevailing party in a civil action, within five years, from the date of entry of the judgment, the final judgment, as, as the right to file a motion for execution of judgment. So within five years from date of entry of the decision. So gusto mong, mana, gusto mong makuha yung pinanalunan mo, 50 million? You can only, file, all you have to do is to file a motion for the issuance of a writ of execution. Now, can it be denied by the court? Can it be denied by the court? No, it cannot be denied by the court. In fact, in so many rulings, the Supreme Court said that the motion for the issuance of a writ of execution is a mere... The issuance of a writ of execution upon motion is a mere ministerial duty of the judge. So, once a motion for the issuance of a writ of execution is filed, it is a mere ministerial function of the court to issue the writ. Meaning, the court cannot exercise jurisdiction. He has to issue the writ of execution. Now, since it is mere ministerial duty of the court to issue a writ of execution, naturally, naturally, it is classified as a non non litigious motion so in other words the losing party need not be given an opportunity to argue in fact 
he need not be notified for that after all the decision is already final and executory why final and executory because of his failure to file a notice of appeal or a petition for review on appeal within the within the 15 day reglementary period well another one eh, for some reasons well the rate of execution uh, was not uh, executed or the execution was not implemented or it then or it was lost or for whatever reason the rate the rate is now was lost or is now unavailable then the movement the 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 winning party should simply file a motion for the issuance of an alias writ of execution again this is a non litigious litigious motion why because it is a ministerial duty a ministerial function of the court to issue a writ of execution okay another one writ of position ipanhalo ka na so all you have to do is file a motion for the issuance of a writ of position to restore the complainant the petitioner for the, for the position of a piece of land so all you have to do is file a motion for the issuance of a writ of position and i repeat this is a non litigious motion the defend the opposing party need not be given the opportunity to argue okay another one suppose that mortgage was foreclosed okay so after the necessary publication an auction sale was conducted so there is now a highest bidder now after the public auction the winning part the bidder the highest bidder is entitled to a certificate of sale now suppose the period within which to redeem the property is say one year had already lapsed so the ownership of the auction property is now consolidated supposed to be consolidated with whom with the with the highest bidder then what is your remedy mr council you can file a motion for the issuance of an order coming from the court directing the sheriff to execute the final certificate of sale so the court will then issue an order requiring the sheriff to execute the final certificate of sale regarding what the piece of land and this and there was an auction sale and the, and this final certificate of sale will be utilized now by the prevailing party the mortgage in a contract of mortgage no no not the the buyer the highest bidder for the purpose of registering the piece of land in his name so yun gagamitin mo pumunta ka na sa registry of deeds so that uh, the property will now be re will now be registered in your name take note it is a ministerial duty also on the part of the registry of deeds to issue a new transfer certificate of title he has no discretion at all just issue a new cert transfer certificate of title in favor of the highest bidder okay so these are so called uh, non litigious motion so the opposing party need not be heard need, need not be given the opportunity to argue so non litigious motions 
we mentioned shall not be set for hearing but shall in fact be served or shall in fact be resolved by the court immediately or within five calendar days from receipt of the motion so no need to conduct a hearing but how about a litigious motion by its name a litigious motion if ever the court will grant the motion the opposing party will be prejudiced so there is prejudice then it is classified as a litigious motion so notice of hearing is necessary so that the opposing party the adverse party the party that might be prejudiced by the court order will be given the opportunity to be heard so a litigious motion shall be accompanied with a notice of hearing wherein the opposing party shall be given the opportunity to be heard so a litigious motion without valid notice of hearing is a mere scrap of paper so there must be a notice of hearing so if you're the counsel uh, litigious motion ganun sa maba yung ano nandun sa maba yung notice of hearing sa baba ng pleading mo Greetings. Nakalagay doon, greetings. Naka-address kanino? Abay, sa clerk of court dyan. Sino pa? Yung kalaban mo. Kalagay doon. They should be furnished a copy. Ah, nakalagay doon. Usually, mga lawyer, mga maiiksi na lang. Uh, please notice that uh, this case will be set for hearing on Friday, etc. Nung oras. Ganun yung litigos motion. So, the opposing party shall be notified and shall be given the opportunity to be heard. So all litigious motion shall be served to the opposing party in a manner that the opposing party will receive it to afford him the opportunity to be heard. Okay, so now the court, of course, may in the exercise of its discretion call a hearing on the motion. Remember, it is subject to the sound discretion of the court. So, the court may, in its discretion, need not conduct a hearing, right? Need not conduct a hearing. But what matters is that the opposing party shall be notified. Okay, so now, what are the litigious motion? Motions that will adversely affect the opposing party okay comes now comes now the summon accompanied with the complaint and other affidavits documents object evidence it is now in the possession of whom the counsel for the defendant now you are the counsel for the defendant are you going to file an answer immediately? Of course, there are several remedies. You can file an answer within 30 calendar days from receipt of the summon, or, or you can file a motion to dismiss, or should the allegation, should the allegation in the complaint are vague, are too general, that it needs to be particularized or be specified for the defendant to prepare his responsive pleading, for the defendant to prepare for trial, then your remedy is to file a motion for bill of particulars. So that is your remedy. File a motion for bill of, bill of particulars. Okay? Bill of particulars. Okay, now, now, Remember that Bill of Particulars is a litigious motion. So, the plaintiff, the plaintiff should be furnished a copy. He should be notified of the motion with a notice of hearing, right? On a Friday, for instance. Usually, Friday, the, the, 
yung motion day, Friday. Under the new rules, yung pa din, Friday. So, the plaintiff shall be afforded the opportunity to argue. Right? Argue. And he shall be afforded the opportunity to submit a bill of particulars which may be a separate pleading or simply an amended pleading. Or he may, he may simply argue that the allegations is or are not uh, too general, not vague, it is specific, it is clear. And that is why it is classified as a non, uh, classified as a litigious motion. Okay, so litigious motion. Another, another uh, litigious motion is a motion to dismiss. Oh, you are filing a motion to dismiss. On what ground? That the court do not have jurisdiction over the subject matter. Or that uh, there is litis pendentia, meaning there is a pending case between the same parties involving the same cause of action. Or the present cause of action or the present civil action is barred. Is barred by what? Uh, a previous judgment, a prior judgment, or res judicata, or barred by statute of limitations or prescription. So you, those are the allowable grounds for a motion to dismiss. These are classified as a litigious motion. Thus, since it is a motion to dismiss, the plaintiff shall be notified. There must be a notice of hearing, otherwise the motion shall be considered as a mere scrap of paper, right? So it will not be, it will be denied by the court if there is no notice of hearing. But uh, how about a counterclaim? Maybe a permissive, permissive counterclaim or a, compo, compo, a compulsory counterclaim. May the plaintiff, plaintiff, may the plaintiff file a motion to dismiss? Yes, a motion to dismiss is applicable also in counterclaim. Maybe compulsory counterclaim or permissive counterclaim. So, motion to dismiss is a litigious motion. Bakit kaya eh? The plaintiff may argue that the court has jurisdiction. Like for instance, a case for forcible entry was filed before the NTC. Okay? So, the defendant filed a motion to dismiss claiming that the MTC do not have jurisdiction. Why? Because according to the movement, the defendant, uh, the case is actually not for forcible entry, but for action publiciana or action reinvindicatoria involving ownership. So the plaintiff, having been notified, having been notified through a notice of hearing, may argue that no, this is not really this is not an action reinvindicatory. Yeah. While there is an issue of ownership, according to the movement, that issue can be settled before the MTC for the purpose of determining who has the rightful position. Not really an act of ownership. After all, it was filed, how many? Within one year from the date of demand to vacate. All right, so it shall be considered as a, it is a litigious motion. Another one, motion for new trial is also a litigious motion. Like for instance, uh, the, move, the defendant filed a motion for new trial saying that there is a newly discovered evidence that it will be considered by the court it will probably alter or change the decision or resolution of the court. Uh, this is a litigious motion. Why? Because the plaintiff may argue, should be given the opportunity to argue, that no, there is no ground, there is no basis to say that it is a newly discovered evidence. Why? No, that other than the fact that it was already existing at that time when the litigation 
was being tried to by the court. It was already in the position of the movement, but he did not utilize it. And that is why it will not classify, it will not qualify as a newly discovered evidence. Another one, your motion for reconsideration. Oh, why are you filing a motion for reconsideration? When we say motion for reconsideration, actually the motion is focusing on attacking, attacking what? The merits of the decision of the court. Like, for instance, that the decision of the court is against the law or it is not against the evidence of the parties or the damages awarded are excessive. So you are filing a motion for reconsideration. That kind of motion is a litigious motion. So the opposing party shall be given notice of hearing and shall be afforded the opportunity to be heard. Another one, uh, classified as a, most, as, uh, a litigious, litigious motion. Motion for execution pending appeal. Well, kanina, sabi lang natin, motion for the issuance of a writ of execution. Uh, what we are referring then is a decision which is already final and executory because the losing party did not file a motion, did not file a notice of appeal to the court that rendered the decision. So the decision is now final and executory. But this one, this is different. Motion for execution pending appeal. So for instance, the losing party filed a notice of appeal to the regional trial court, the court that rendered the decision. Why a notice of appeal? Why the remedy is a notice of appeal? Because the regional trial court was then exercising its original jurisdiction and that is why the appropriate remedy is a notice of appeal. Okay, okay. So the case is now with the court of appeals because of the notice of appeal. Or if the regional trial court is exercising its appellate jurisdiction, then the remedy is petition for review on appeal. Okay, so now the decision is now on appeal. Can it be executed under Rule 39? Yes, it can be executed. But uh, this execution is so-called discretionary execution. Discretionary execution. Meaning the court may exercise its discretion in granting the motion for execution pending appeal or me deny it. It is no longer, no longer, no longer a ministerial function. Not a ministerial function, but a discretionary function on the part of the court, maybe the court of appeals, to grant or deny a motion for execution pending appeal. So it is a litigious motion. Why a litigious motion? Because both parties, the defendant, uh, the losing party, should be given the opportunity to argue. In fact, he can post a bond. Remember that in a motion for execution pending appeal, the movement should file a bond. Right? But the opposing party may also, may also post a counter bond for that particular purpose. So, motion for execution pending appeal is a litigious motion. Okay. Now, another one is motion to amend after a responsive pleading has been filed. Remember that uh, a complainant or a party may once as a matter of right, I mean this pleading before a responsive pleading is filed. Right? It is his right to amend the pleading, his complaint. But after 
the defendant, the opposing party, files his answer, which is a responsive pleading, the plaintiff can amend this pleading only with prior leave of court. You have to ask permission from the court to amend your complaint. It is not a matter of right anymore, but discretionary on the part of the court because a responsive pleading has already been filed. So again, it is a litigious motion. The defendant who already filed a motion to dismiss will be given the opportunity to argue. More so if the answer filed by the defendant is an answer with counterclaim. So, I repeat, it is a litigious motion. Or how about if there is a lien on one's property, a statutory lien, and you want that lien be cancelled, statut statutory lien be cancelled, you have to file a motion for its cancellation. But remember, the party in whose Fibor, the lien was annotated on a certificate, transfer certificate of title, shall be afforded the opportunity to be heard. Another one, motion for an order to break in or for a writ of demolition. Well, panalo ka na, ejectment, but there is a need to demolish the property. So, you have to file a motion for an order to break in or for a writ of demolition. It is a, a litigious motion because the opposing party again shall be given the opportunity to be heard. Another one is motion for intervention. Okay, can when when will there be an intervention? So A and B plaintiff and defendant in a civil action. Here is Mr. X. Mr. X is a complete stranger, meaning he is not a party to the civil action. Civil action, for instance, uh, a recovery of ownership or simply possession of a property. Okay, here is Mr. X claiming that he will be prejudiced by the civil action between A and B because he's the owner of the property or he is interested in the outcome of the case or he has an interest to that property. He wants his interest to be protected. You're the counsel for Mr. X. What will you do? You can file a motion for what? Intervention. Actually, you have to file a motion for leave to allow to intervene in that civil action. Now, if your client, Mr. X, is interested in the property or in the interest of the property against both the plaintiff and the defendant, then your client should file what? A motion, a motion for leave of court to intervene and the, the, and the pleading the, applic the, available, the applicable pleading is a complaint in intervention. Or if your client, Mr. X, a stranger in that civil action, is interested in joining with the defendant, Mr. B, then again, I repeat, you have to file a motion for leave of court to intervene and your accompanying, uh, accompanying pleading is what? An answer in intervention. Now, remember that uh, the parties, in this case E and B, shall be afforded the opportunity to argue or to be heard because this is a, tawag, this is a litigious motion. Okay. Now, suppose that uh, the defendant filed his answer. Okay. Dami niyang sagot. Puro mga paragraph 2 of the complaint is expressly denied. 
But the, what he was denying to is an actionable document. Say, a promissory note of or a deed of mortgage or a deed of sale. But the denial is not under oath. It is not specific. Although he used the word specific, yet the denial is actually not specific. That would amount to an admission. In fact, a judicial admission. Or if the answers really are mere admissions, so what will you do if you are the counsel for the plaintiff? What will you do? The defendant filed an answer, but there are, are there were no issues raised. Your allegations were in fact admitted. So what will you be your remedy, counsel for the plaintiff? Your remedy is to file a motion for judgment on the pleadings. There will be no trial anymore because the court, if ever your motion is granted, should render judgment based on the pleadings. But this is a litigious motion. The defendant shall be given the opportunity to argue. And that is why there shall be what? Notice of hearing otherwise the motion for judgment on the pleadings is a mere scrap of papers. Well, another one, another litigious motion is motion for summary judgment. Medyo kakambal at magkapatid ng judgment on the pleadings. Pero may pagkabaliktad ng konti. Because in a motion for summary judgment, while the defendant in his answer denies the claim or the allegation of the plaintiff. There is denial. But the denial are really not true. The denials are false or sham. sham. In the words of the rules of court, sham, not true. Not, not true, but false. Now, you are the counsel for the plaintiff. What is your remedy? Ask the examiner. What is your remedy? Your remedy is to file a motion for summary judgment. A motion for summary judgment is, an, is a remedy available only if the answer, although there are denials, but there is actually no issue. Apparently, there is an issue because of the denial, but the denial are false or sham, so there is actually no issue. Thus, the remedy is motion for summary judgment. The court will render judgment based on what? Kanina, motion judgment on the pleading, based on the pleadings. But motion for summary judgment, the court will base its decision to the affidavit submitted or the position papers. Not really a trial. So, summary judgment. But, the opposing party shall be notified of the motion because it is a, a litigious motion. Thus, the opposing party shall be afforded, shall be given the opportunity to argue. All right? Another one, demurrer to evidence, which is applicable not only in a civil action but in a criminal action as well. All right? Comes now the plaintiff. The plaintiff already presented three witnesses. And after presentation of his witnesses, the plaintiff now offered its evidence, documentary and object evidence. And thereafter, rested its case, saying, Your Honor, please, we do not have any other, any other evidence. Siempre mag-object, the defendant objects. Anong sabi ni judge? All right, uh, all objections are overruled. Or say, you may reason. Bahala siya. Bahala siya. Now, if you are the counsel for the defendant, if you believe that uh, the evidence presented by the plaintiff is insufficient to hold your client civilly liable or whatever liabilities, what is your remedy? 
Well, your remedy is file a demurrer to evidence. When we say demurrer to evidence, it is actually a motion to dismiss, founded on the insufficiency of the evidence presented by the plaintiff. So demurrer to evidence is your remedy. Okay. Now, is there a need of prior level of court? Oh, there is no need. There is no need of prior level of court. No need. Okay. So, so, po, so this is a litigious motion. Demurrer to evidence is a litigious motion. So, there must be a notice of hearing wherein the plaintiff shall be given the opportunity to argue. Okay. Pag sinabi ni judge, oo nga, no? Insufficient yung evidence, then it will be dismissed. The civil action will be dismissed. But if you are the plaintiff, what would be your remedy? Dismissal ito. When we say dismissal, it is a decision on its merits. So your remedy is an appeal. If the, I repeat, if the regional trial court is exercising its original jurisdiction, your remedy is simply what? File a notice of appeal to the RTC that rendered the decision. So, in your rare, also an appeal. Comes now the Court of Appeals. The decision of the regional trial court was reversed. Reversed. Na dismiss, panalo ka na. But na reverse. Panalo si plaintiff. Well, sorry for the move on in a demurrer to evidence because by filing a demurrer to evidence in this case, he already waives the presentation of his evidence. But before the regional trial court, if the demurrer to evidence is denied, do not worry, Mr. Movan, because you can present your evidence in court. We have to distinguish this one with demurrer to evidence in criminal cases. Because in criminal cases, the best thing to do is file first a motion for leave of court. Motion for leave of court to file demurrer to evidence. And if granted, then file demurrer to evidence. And if your demurrer to evidence is denied, then present your defense evidence. Right? But uh, if if the accused files a demurrer to evidence without leave of court or his motion for leave of court was denied by the court and the demurrer to evidence is denied, sorry for the accused because he cannot present evidence anymore for his defense. By filing a demurrer to evidence without leave of court, the accused weaves his right to present evidence. So demurrer to evidence in a civil action as well as in a criminal action. Now, suppose that that the defendant, despite receipt of uh, someone, despite service of someone, he did not file his answer. Astig, diba? Tigas. He did not file his answer. You are the plaintiff. What is your remedy? The defendant did not file his answer. The 30 day calendar days within which to file the answer had already lapsed or elapsed. What would be your remedy, Mr. Plintip? Your remedy is to file a motion to declare the defendant in default. Now, if your motion is granted, then the defendant who is now in default, he already loses his standing in the litigation. Thus, he is not allowed to present evidence. He can is not allowed to participate in the proceeding, although he still is entitled to be notified of the subsequent proceeding. Now, a motion to declare the defendant in default is a litigious, a litigious motion. The defendant should be afforded the opportunity to defend himself. 
right? To argue because there might be justifiable reason why he is unable to file an answer. Okay. Now, motion shall be served, right? How shall someone be served? By personal service. So, dalhin mo. Kanino? Sa kalaban mo. Personal. In his office or in his residence or through an accredited private courier. This is a new rule, a new rule. Accredited private courier. So, a new rule. Private courier. Accredited. Another one, the conventional one, is the registered mail. Right? Registered mail. And another one, a new rule, is through electronic means. But uh, it should be made in a manner as to ensure receipt by the other party. So, remember that a litigious motion may be opposed. The, op the opposing party may oppose a litigious motion. So he can file his opposition to a litigious motion within five calendar days from receipt. So it can be opposed and uh, the court, the rules of court allows an opposition to a litigious motion. It is but proper because it will prove prejudice the opposing party. So uh, thereafter, it shall be resolved by the trial court upon receipt of the opposition or after the expiration of the period given to the opposing party. So that is a litigious motion. All right, the motion day as uh, as usual, luma na to. Ganun pa rin, hindi naman nagbabago. In general, it should be on a Friday. Pero kung motion naman in the course of the trial, well, any day, basta nagsalita ka may motion. Any day. But in general, motions in writing, it should be on a Friday. The motion shall be set for hearing on a Friday. And I repeat, it is discretionary on the, port, on the part of the court to conduct a hearing. Now, what is this omnibus motion rule? Actually, this is also an old rule. You can, you can still find this one in the new rules of civil procedure. When we say an omnibus motion rule, it is a motion questioning or attacking a pleading or questioning or attacking an order of the court or a judgment of the court or proceeding. But since it is classified as an omnibus motion, then the rule requires that in an omnibus motion, it shall include all the objections available. Why are you filing this motion? So you have to state the ground. And all those grounds shall be stated. And according to the rules of court, grounds not included shall be deemed weaved. Okay? So, objections not included in an omnibus motion shall be deemed with. Well, that is a mere general rule. Because there are matters even if not included in the motion as a ground can still be considered. So, the following shall not be considered with even if not 
pleaded in a motion. Like the fact that the court has no jurisdiction over the subject matter. As uh, we mentioned several times, when the court do not have jurisdiction over the subject matter, it can be questioned any time, even on appeal, even before the Supreme Court. Okay. Now, suppose there was no motion to dismiss on the ground that the court has no jurisdiction over the subject matter. Walang motion. That, there was, that is why there was trial and a court rendered a decision. On appeal. On appeal. May the ground that the court do not have jurisdiction over the subject matter may still be invoked by a party litigant. Well, the Supreme Court said yes. Even if not included in a motion to dismiss, it can be utilized as a ground for a motion to dismiss during the trial, after the trial, even after the court renders a decision. But uh, you will take note that subject to the condition that uh, the principle on stopil by latches is not applicable. So, even if there is no motion for the dismissal on the ground that the court has no jurisdiction, it can be invoked any time. The court can even dismiss it even without a motion. Another one where even if not raised in a motion, still it can be invoked later on. The fact that there is another action pending between the same parties for the same cause, meaning litis pendentia. So, if not included in a motion to dismiss, is still the movant or a party litigant can avail of that motion. Motion for dismissal on the ground that there is another action pending between the same parties involving the same cause of action. You will note that in litis pendentia, litis pendentia, it is not it is not necessary that the civil action to be dismissed was filed after the first after the first case. It is not always necessary that it is the first case that shall be dismissed. It may happen that it is the second case which will be dismissed on the ground of litis pendentia. Hindi parate yung una, but in general, yung una ang mag prevail but it dismiss yung the, the later case. But that is a mere general rule. Okay, mere general rule. Okay, we will discuss that later also in detail in a motion to dismiss. Well, another one is that the action is barred by a prior judgment or risk judicata since there is already a decision even if this ground for a motion to dismiss is not invoked in an omnibus motion still it can be raised still it can be invoked later on another one is the present action is barred by the statute of limitations or prescription. Again, I repeat, even if not invoked in a motion to dismiss, not included in an omnibus motion, still it can be considered later on, even on appeal, even after the court rendered a decision. Why? Because if there is, if the action is barred by statute of limitation, there is no cause of action anymore on the part of the plaintiff. He is not entitled to the benefits of the law because his action is already barred by the statute of limitation. So, even if not included in a motion to dismiss, the ground for a motion to dismiss that the present action is barred by the statute of limitation can be utilized, it can be used, 
it can be invoked even after trial, even after a decision has already been rendered. All right, suppose that uh, you filed a motion for extension of time to file a pleading. We mentioned that a while ago. Motion for extension of time to file pleading. What pleading? Answer. Other motion for extension of time to file other pleadings is not allowed by the rule. But if it is a motion for if it is a motion for extension of time to file an answer, that is allowed. That is allowed. Okay? That is allowed. Now, suppose you file a motion for extension of time to file an answer. What shall accompany your pleading? Motion for extension of time to file an answer. What shall accompany your pleading? Aside from the affidavit to prove that uh, the delay in the submission of uh, the pleading is justified. You have to attach the pleading so to be amended. Kaya nakalagay doon, motion for extension of time to file an answer. Yan. With a motion to admit the attached answer. Usually, isasama mo na yan. Sinasama mo. Kaya, pag granted, eh, wala na. Meron ka ng answer. Already in court. So, but remember, there must be motion for leave of court to file such kind of pleading. All right, we now move on to the prohibited motions. There are so many prohibited motions under the new rules of court. Okay. First is motion to dismiss. A motion to dismiss is a prohibited pleading. It is not allowed by the rules of court. Motion to dismiss. May exceptions. The exceptions will already have been mentioning that repeatedly. The court do not have jurisdiction over the subject matter. That there is a pending action between the same parties involving the same cause of action. That the present action is barred by a prior judgment or res judicata that the prior action is barred by the statute of limitation or res uh, by, or by prescription. Oh, hindi nyo na makalimutan. Motion to dismiss is now a prohibited pleading except those we already mentioned. Uh, those we mentioned. Another one, motion to hear affirmative defenses. Okay, for instance, in your answer, you filed what? You re in your answer, you raised the defense, affirmative defense of payment or fraud. Others. Alagay ka doon. That was your answer. So, file ka ng answer. Yung cliente mo na makulit, kakalabitin ka. Attorney, ano bang nangyari sa motion? Ano bang nangyari sa affirmative defenses natin. Eh, bayad na talaga yan, attorney. Bayad na ako. Kukulitin ka ng kliente, ah. Marami mga kliente uh, kala nila, yung lawyer, iutosan nila. Pero dapat, huwag kayong pumayag. Yung sabihin mo, attorney, sige, mag-file ka ng motion to hear affirmative defenses, yung bayad ko. Eh, huwag kayong sumunod sa kliente nyo pag mali, eh. Why? Because motion to hear affirmative defenses is a prohibited motion. Yan ang gagawin mo. You just wait. Antayin mo si, si judge for the appropriate action. Not for you to file 
motion to her affirmative defenses. Nung maiinis si Judge sa'yo, sabi mo, motion? Inuutosan pa ako ng abogadong ito. Eh, bawal na nga. Mamaya, pag-initan ka ninyo. Alright, another one. Eh, talo ka. Talo. Talo ka sa affirmative defenses mo. You rest the affirmative defense of fraud. Or payment. Or uh, violation of the statute of frauds. Or prescription. Well, your affirmative defenses were not considered by the court. It was denied by the trial court. Okay, what is your remedy? To file a motion for reconsideration? Motion for reconsideration. But remember, you already filed an answer. In your answer, you you raised affirmative defenses. But uh, was denied by the court. Are you going to file a motion for reconsideration so that the court may miss take a second look into your motion in your, into your affirmative defenses? No, do not do that. Why? Because motion for reconsideration of the court's action on your affirmative defenses is now a prohibited pleading. So if asked in the bar examination, anong sagot mo? If you are the judge, motion denied. Because a motion, motion denied, yung ilalagay, motion denied. Tapos anong reason mo? Ah, yung second paragraph. Well, under the rules of court, motion for reconsideration of the court's action on the affirmative defense is now a prohibited pleading. Tapos, yung application na. In the, in the case, in the present case, it is, in the present case, the court denied the movement's motion, uh, denied the, the defendant's affirmative defenses. Thus, the motion should be denied. The motion for reconsideration should be denied. So, what is your remedy? The follow-up question, what is your remedy? You're the counsel for the defendant. Your motion for reconsideration of the court's action on the affirmative defense was denied. What is your remedy? Remember, you already filed an answer. Raising what? Payment as one of your defenses. But uh, it was denied by the court. Since you cannot file a motion for reconsideration because it is now a prohibited pleading, your remedy is, what is your remedy? They go to trial. That is your remedy. Go to trial. Then after trial, you wait for the final disposition of the case, meaning the decision. Italo ka. What is your remedy? This time, you can file an appeal. Okay? File an appeal. And that in your appeal to the Court of Appeals, you can assign as one of your assigned errors the denial of your of the trial court of your affirmative defense of payment. So that is the remedy. Do not argue that it is unfair on the part of the defendant why he is not allowed for a motion for reconsideration. Do not argue. The Supreme Court has already said no motion for reconsideration of the court's action on affirmative defense is not is a prohibited pleading. Wag kang gumawa. Do not make your own rule. You obey the Supreme Court. Wag tayong magmamayabang na ako'y matalino, magdaling. Eh, talino ka, no doubt. E rules of procedure yan. Under Section 5 of Article 8 of the 19, 1987 Constitution, only the Supreme Court has the power and authority to promulgate rules of procedure, no other. So all of us, lawyers, should submit. Pag pumasa na kay sa bar, lagi tayong 
obedient as a court because we are officers of the court. And in fact, in the lawyer's oath, which all of you should memorize, uh, pag malapit na yung bar, i-review nyo uli. Pre-week, memoryahin nyo kasi minsan tinatanong. Kung hindi nyo masakot, sagot, baka bumagsak kayo sa legal ethics pa lang. Pag lawyer na, eh, nakalimutan ko na rin. Ko na, noon, grabe, memoryado. Ngayon, hindi ko na matandaan. Memoryado ko noon, pero hindi rin tinanong sa barik sa namin. Hindi ko na matandaan. Pero doon na tuwari. Bakit? Eh, isa sa mga duty no, ng lawyer to uphold the Constitution. Okay, ikaw muna. Do not delay. What? For money. What? Your client's interest. Huwag kang magsinuhaling in a case. Bawal. Right? Ang daming, ang daming mga alituntunon yung lawyer na minsan pinagtatawan ng ibang mga tao. Uh, lawyers, liars. Pero actually, isa sa pinaka-profession na mahib, may, napakahigpit ng mga regulasyon, the law profession. Napakahigpit ng legal ethics, judicial ethics. Napakahigpit. Pag sinabi na, eh ba't maraming lawyer na loko-loko-loko lang dyan? Eh, hindi kasi nagrekla. Sabi mo, niloko ka ba? Opo. Eh ba't hindi mo sinampan? Kasuhan mo. Hindi masuspend from the practice of law or baka madisbard pa. Well, another prohibited motion is motion to suspend the proceeding. Oh, about the case is now with the regional trial court. You want the proceeding be suspended for whatever grounds, for whatever grounds. Well, under the new rules, court do not file a motion to suspend the proceeding if your motion is not accompanied with a temporary restraining order or an injunction filed by a higher court. So, before filing a motion to suspend proceeding, which is now a prohibited motion, make sure that your motion is accompanied with a temporary restraining order or an injunction issued by the appellate court. So you have to look into that matter. So, ask in the bar examination, ganun yan, motion to suspend proceeding is a prohibited motion. Exception, eh, kung merong temporary restraining order or an injunction issued by the higher court, appellate court, like the Court of Appeals, the Court of Tax Appeals in tax cases, or in other cases, where? With the Sandigan, with the Sandigan Bayan. Now, motion for extension of time. We mentioned, we, we already mentioned this one. Motion for extension of time, of time to file pleadings. Nako, anong pleadings? Lahat ng pleadings except motion for extension of time to file an answer. Motion for extension of time to file an affidavit or any other papers. Huwag ka lang mag-aksaya kasi hindi nga pinapayagan. Motion for extension of time to file a trial brief. Pwede ba? Huwag ka lang huwag ka mag-aksaya ng panahon because that is now a prohibited motion. Motion for extension of time to file pleadings is now a prohibited pleading except if your basis, if your ground is motion for extension of time to file an answer. Ba't kaya pinapayag, pinapayagan pa ng Supreme Court in motion for extension of time to file an answer? Well, the reason behind is what? There must be, the defendant should be afforded due process of law according to the Constitution. So he should not be deprived of his property without due process of law. Property, kasi civil ka, action. He should not be deprived unless he should be given the opportunity to be heard in court. So, pinapayakan. Because this is an answer. Answer ang pleading dito. And it is in the answer 
that the defendant will be, will be afforded the opportunity to be heard. Right? That is due process of law. Yung motion for reconsideration, never mind about that. Appeal, never mind about that. Why? As sabi ng Supreme Court in so many cases, that uh, motion for reconsideration, appeal, they are not part of due process of law. Ang number one talaga dyan, answer, the opportunity to file an answer. Kaya nga, there must be a summon so that the defendant should be given the opportunity to file his answer. And that is due process of law. Well, another one, pero nabanggit na natin ito, motion for postponement intended for delay is not allowed. Anong exception? Sabi natin, anong exception? Nako, anong mga exception dyan? Acts of God, force major, physical, physical inability of the witness to testify. Okay, so, uh, these are mere uh, uh, basic uh, provisions of the rules of court, but you have to have a mastery on this because without the uh, mastery in this basic principle your dream to become a lawyer is at stake uh, also in a motion for postponement allowed by the court rules of court be ready for the pay payment of the postponement fee under rule 141 not only that not only that but uh, you have to complete the presentation of your evidence within the agreed time or period. Limbawa, during the pre-trial, Mr. Clown's counsel, how many trial dates? We need three trial dates. Ah, okay, granted. Inagpapmosyon ka na ng postponement. Granted din. Dalawa na lang. Aba, you have to complete the presentation of your evidence during the remaining trial dates. Okay. Now, there are dismissals with prejudice. There are dismissals without prejudice. O ano pala itong dismissals with prejudice? Pag sinabing dismissals with prejudice, The civil action cannot be instituted again for the second time. The complainant is barred from instituting that civil action a second time because the dismissal is with prejudice. So, na dismissal ka na, sorry ka na. That is with prejudice. So, what is your remedy? Since the dismissal is with prejudice, you can appeal. You can appeal. So, an, or an order granting a motion to dismiss or that the action, the cause of action is barred by a prior judgment or that the action is barred by the statute of limitation, or that the claim or demand set forth in the pleading has already been paid. Bayad na. Bayad ka na. Oh, you already waived your right. Mr. Pintip, you already waived your right to claim from the defendant. Or you, already, or, or you already abandoned your right. Or your right is otherwise extinguished for some other grounds. Or that, Mr. Plintiff, your civil action is unenforceable. It was not put into writing. The agreement is a deed of sale of a piece of land. So according to the civil code, it shall be in writing to be enforceable. Or there is a promise to pay. Promise to pay. What? The obligation of a third person. 
But it was not in writing, so it is unenforceable. Or a promise to perform an obligation after one year from the date of its agreement. It is unenforceable unless it is put into writing. Okay? So, the dismissal is with prejudice. So, the dismissal shall bar the filing of the same action or claim later on. Sakit sa ulo mo. So, an order dismissing the action on those grounds is with prejudice. Since it is with prejudice, it cannot be refiled. It would amount to the dismissal Postal of the civil action on its merits. Bakit in merits? If pinaniniwalaan ng court na bayad na, eh, hindi naman pala bayad eh. So, you can avail of the remedy of appeal. Pwedeng mag-appeal at doon. Ang katunayan, hindi naman bayad talaga yan. Okay. How about an order denying a motion to dismiss. Nako, denied naman yung motion to dismiss mo. What is your remedy? Well, an order denying a motion to dismiss may only be reviewed by appeal. Motion to dismiss. It is a mere a uh, an order denying a motion to dismiss is a mere interlocutory order that neither terminates the case nor finally disposes of it as it leaves something for the court to act. So, it is a mere interlocutory order. But, it is reviewable by appeal. The general rule is that uh, denial of a motion to dismiss, okay, dismiss, cannot be questioned in a civil action for certiorari, which is a remedy designed to correct errors, not errors of judgment. So, denial of your motion to dismiss, that is actually a judgment of the court. There may be an error of judgment. But the remedy is not certiorari because certiorari, there is grave abuse of discretion amounting to want or lack of jurisdiction. But if, if there is mere errors of judgment, certiorari is not an available remedy but an appeal. So that would be your remedy, appeal, not a ground for certiorari. Okay, let us now move to the motion to dismiss. Although nabanggit naman natin yung mga grounds for a motion to dismiss. Rule 16 of the Rules of Court uh, has has already been deleted, either deleted or transposed to some other provisions of the rules of court. Kaya wala ka nang makikitang chapter for a motion to dismiss. Pero pwede bang mag-file ng motion to dismiss? Yes! Meron pa din. Kahit na walang chapter na doon. Wala, naglock tao na eh. Rule 15, wala nang 16. Rule 17. Okay. Pero meron pa rin. Meron pa rin motion to dismiss. Okay. Now, when is the appropriate time? You would like to file a motion to dismiss your the counsel for the defendant? Yes. When is the appropriate time for you to file a motion to dismiss? Kailan ka? Motion to dismiss. Actually, itong i-discuss natin, motion to dismiss, 
we already discussed it this one pero we have to do it again para sigurado hindi kayo taga talaga malilito if asked in the bar examination but among law students eh, hindi rin kayo malilito if asked in your midterm examination or final examination so kailan ka if you are the counsel for the defendant when will you file a motion to dismiss in a civil action well supposed to be it should be what before filing an answer so before filing an answer a responsive pleading the defendant may file a motion to dismiss if there are grounds for a motion to dismiss like for instance a case for forcible entry was filed before the regional trial court or a claim for 400,000 was filed before the regional trial court oh what is your remedy you can file a motion to dismiss on what ground that the court has no jurisdiction over the subject matter very clear right napakaliwanag very clear or a civil action for a uh, civil action for specific performance it was filed before the metropolitan trial court what is your remedy motion to dismiss on the ground that the court the mtc has no jurisdiction over the subject matter why because the civil action for specific performance is what an action incapable of pecuniary estimation thus jurisdiction original and exclusive jurisdiction is with the regional trial court or an action for revival of judgment in a civil case which was not executed the, the winning party did not file a motion to execute to for the issuance of a writ, writ of execution within a period of five years from date of each entry but within but after the five day five year period and within the 10 year period the prevailing party filed an action for the revival of the judgment it was filed before the court of appeals you are the justice of the court of appeals resolved well petition for revival or the action for the revival of judgment should be denied why well under the law not under the rules of court under the law under bp 129 revive the court of appeals do not have jurisdiction on revival of judgment jurisdiction lies with the regional trial court in this case since what was filed is a revival of judgment which was not executed within a period of five years from date of entry the action shall be filed with the regional trial court within regional trial court which regional trial court not necessarily the regional trial court that rendered the decision any regional trial court all regional trial court has jurisdiction not necessarily the court that rendered the judgment so take note of that take note of course of the venue where shall the action be filed papasok na naman yung role of venue okay another ground for a motion to dismiss a civil action although nabanggit na natin that there is another action between the same parties for the same cause okay kanina binanggit ko yung litis pendensya anong sabi natin kanina when we say litis pendensya not necessarily that the first civil case shall be the one that shall be dismissed not necessarily no no that there is another action between the same parties or litis pendensia not necessarily that it is the civil action the second civil action that must be dismissed because of litis pendensia 
depending upon the circumstances, the civil case, case number one may be the case which will be dismissed. So, depende, pero ordinarily, it should be the first case in general. But there are instances where the Supreme Court said, no, it is the first civil action that shall be dismissed. The civil action on the ground of litis pendentia. According to the Supreme Court, it will, if you will look at the provisions of the civil code and the rules of court on litis pendentia, the, law, the rules of court did not say previous case. No. The rules of court simply says pending case. So maybe the first, maybe the second shall be dismissed. Halimbawa, a first civil action was filed. Why was the civil action, the first civil action was filed? Because the complainant is anticipating, anticipating, the complainant is anticipating that the opposing party may later on file a case against him. So, para maunahan, o oh, uunahan ko na siya. Ah, uunahan ko na. Okay, so, in, anticipate, in anticipation of the case that will be subsequently filed. So, that is your purpose. So, it may happen that in this case, that what is to be dismissed is the first civil action filed, not the second one, on the ground of latest, latest pendentia. Uh, for instance, for instance, uh, a civil action was filed, was filed. For what? For what? Uh, for what uh, action? For instance, uh, quieting of title. Oh, quieting of title. That was the first civil action filed. Quieting of title. Anong purpose but quieting of title? Para hindi na makapagsilita, di ba? We, we studied this one on the law on property. To quiet, there is cloud of doubt on the transfer certificate of title. Remove it. So file a petition for quieting of title. Tama ba siya? Okay naman. Tama. No? But ba't kaya nag-file siya ng ganun? In anticipation that the other party will file will file an, an action for the declaration of nullity of a deed of sale. Ooh. Deed of sale. Deed of sale. Or nullification of the transfer certificate of title on some other grounds. Okay. Nullification of the transfer certificate of title. Inunahan mo na ngayon siya. Quieting of title ang inuna mo. Subsequently, the opposing party filed an action in court to declare the transfer certificate of title na lang void. Okay. Pero sabi ng Supreme Court, eh, kung tingnan mo yung dalawa, eh, pareho lang naman, they're attacking on the title. Quieting of title. Eh, you're questioning the title to the property. But an action for declaration of nullity of the transfer certificate of title, title din naman ang pinag-uusapan. Title din naman. But in that case, the Supreme Court said, eh, pareho lang naman title dyan. But uh, there is now a motion filed, a motion to dismiss on the ground of litis pendentia. All of them are pending litigation, right? Involved with the same parties, involving the same cause of action. Pero ang sabi ng Supreme Court, to resolve once and for all the the issue between the parties, i-dismiss na lang natin itong quieting of title. The second case, the civil action for declaration of nullity of the transfer certificate of title shall prevail. Bakit daw? Eh kung halimbawa, dineclare ng, ng, ng court na null and void, tapos na yung quieting of title, tapos na rin, wala na. O kaya, sinasabi ng ng court na valid naman yan, titulo. O di tapos na rin yung quieting of title. Kaysa kung quieting of title, although pariho namang titulo, mag, medyo alangan daw, alangan. So, not necessarily, but uh, in majority, majority of the Supreme Court ruling, eh, lagi talagang 
na dismiss ang the first, the second civil action. Lagi. But uh, not all. There are other cases. Meron nangyari dito sa Rizal Province. Ganon. Kilala. Kilala ko yung lawyer. Eh. Kilala ko. The first case was filed in Morong. The Regional Trial Court in Morong, Rizal. Doon na file. But mga utang-utang lang. <laughs> pera lang. Ang pera na punta sa abogado na kilala ko. Ang sama kasi nakalagay yung pangalan ng abogado. Yung pera daw nandun sa lawyer. Nakakilala ko. Matagal na kaming hindi nagkita eh. Magaling na lawyer yun. Pala kaibigan, kaklose ko naman. Subsequently, another case was filed. Where? In Antipolo City, Regional Trial Court. Involving the same parties. Nagbaliktad na nga lang. Ito ngayon, kayo ng defendant. Well, in that case, before Antipolo City, ang issue kasi doon, about the validity of the transaction. Doon naman sa, ang, sa Morong Rizal, about the collection, the payment, na nandun daw kay lawyer. Akin na yan, nandun kay lawyer. Eh, sabi ng simple, latest pendensya. All right, between these two cases, which one shall be dismissed? Eh, sabi ng Supreme Court, ordinarily, dapat ang ma-dismiss yung sa Antipolo City kasi huli na yan eh. Kaya lang sabi ng Supreme Court, eh, in this case, what is to be dismissed is the first case that was filed where? In Morong Rizal. The case filed before the regional trial court in Antipolo City shall prevail. It shall proceed because it involves about the nullity of the transaction. Tama nga Supreme Court kasi doon ang pinafile mo. Akin na yung pera, nandiyan kay attorney. Pagdating naman sa regional trial, hindi, nalanvoid yung kontrata. Adi, hindi ka na makapangulikta or valid naman, ikuliktahin mo. Well, madugong kaso. Well, basta in general, Huwag niyong isipin lagi that it is the first, the second case that shall be dismissed pag ang issue litis pindensya. Basahin niyo na maigi yung facts. Baka malilito kayo. Oh, you read cases on that. Yung, I'm not saying na bibinta ko ng libro. Ayoko nang gano'n, naka, naka, nakakahiya. Ayoko nang. Pero yung binanggit kong antipolo, nandun sa libro ko, ang haba ng, ka, ang haba ng kasong yan. Siyempre, iniiksiam ko na lang. Eh, doon, para maunawaan nyo ng maigi na not necessarily that the second action shall be suspended. Or it may be the first that, oh no, that, that shall be dismissed. It may be the first case that, mis, that may be Dismiss. Pero again, I repeat, ordinarily, it is the second action, the civil action, that are dismissed. On what ground? Of litis pendensia. That there is another action between the same parties for the same cause. Another one, ground for a dismissal. Eh, sanay na tayo dito, ulit-ulit. That a cause of action is already barred by a prior judgment or is judicata or that the action is barred by the statute of limitation. Well, a motion to dismiss, a motion to dismiss actually partakes of the nature of a demurrer. Di ba nagbanggit tayo kanina, demurrer to evidence. Well, according to the Supreme Court, uh, a motion to dismiss partakes of the nature of a demurrer. Why? Because if you file a motion to dismiss, the movement hypothetically admits the truth of the allegations of fact in the complaint. Inadmit mo yan. Kasi you file a motion to dismiss on what ground? that the court do not have jurisdiction over the subject matter. O tingnan mo. So, inadmit mo. But, you are raising the defense that the case should be dismissed. A motion to dismiss 
is not a responsive pleading. A responsive pleading is an answer. Is what? The answer is a responsive pleading. A motion to dismiss is not a responsive pleading. Now, the rule is that general rule, general rule, general rule lang. A motion, the a court will not dismiss the civil action absent a motion to dismiss filed by the defendant. If you will make a mere manifestation in court, tatayo ka, make manifestation, or file a pleading or manifestation, that will not suffice. You have to file a motion to dismiss. Pero general rule lang yan. The court can dismiss the civil action without any motion where the court do not have jurisdiction over the subject matter. Now, what will happen? What will happen if the civil action upon motion or moto proprio was dismissed? Well, as we mentioned a while ago, the order, the order granting the dismissal shall be a bar for the refiling of the action or claim. So, a bar meaning you cannot institute the same civil action anymore. All right. Now, despite the granting of the motion to dismiss. Okay. okay. Tandaan nyo, general rule, if a motion to dismiss is granted, the plaintiff is already barred from filing the same civil action involving the same cause of action involving the same parties. Okay. So, this, but remember that despite the granting of a motion to dismiss, uh, the plaintiff may still file an, another civil action. Or I only think of general rule, once a motion to dismiss is granted, the plaintiff cannot file the same civil action anymore. But there are instances where the plaintiff may still file another civil action. For instance, what was the ground for the dismissal on the ground that the the dismissal of the civil action is, is on the ground that the court ah do not be misled dismissal on the ground that the court has no jurisdiction over the person of the offending party ah do not be misled i'm saying do not be misled kasi sabi nyo sir bakit na dismiss on the ground that the court did not acquire jurisdiction over the person of the, of the defendant. Is it not that a motion to dismiss on that ground is now prohibited? Correct. Yo, that is correct. Prohibited. But that ground, that ground can be invoked in the answer as an affirmative defense. Hindi mo na sasabihin motion to dismiss, but as an affirmative defense defense and and even if it is now a prohibited pleading a motion to dismiss on the ground that the court did not acquire jurisdiction over the person of the defendant over the person of the defendant although it is no longer a ground for the dismissal of the civil action yet still it is a ground a ground a legal basis for the dismissal of the civil action. Eh, yun yung answer mo eh. Affirmative answer mo. The court did not acquire jurisdiction over the person of the defendant. Naturally, the court may dismiss it because if the court did not acquire jurisdiction over the person of the defendant because the defendant was not summoned, then the court, did, then the defendant will be deprived of his right to live deprived of his right to due process of law. Kaya lang, nabanggit natin noon sa bagong rules of procedure, pag alert to si judge, ah, lalo na if the counsel appears, eh, huwag kang mag-appear. <laughs> you just simply file an answer. Do not appear in court. Why? Counsel. Mamaya, you can, you will receive an order. Mr. Counsel, yes, you don't know. Hindi mo, bait ka naman. Yes, you don't know. Mabait talaga ako. Inuutosan kita. Hindi naman sabihin na. Inaatasan kita. 
to serve the summon to your client. Ah, tapos ka na. Tapos ka na. Right? Pero kung halimbawa, nakalimot si judge, the court did not issue an order ordering or requiring the defense counsel to serve the summon to his client, then the court, the trial court, will dismiss the civil action on what ground? That the court did not acquire or has no jurisdiction over the person of the defendant. They really lost ka na dismiss. Okay, na dismiss. Okay, papano naman si plaintiff? Sa topic natin, may the plaintiff refile the civil action? Ah, yes! Under this instance, the dismissal of the civil action on the ground that the court did not acquire jurisdiction over the person of the defendant, this ground for dismissal is not a bar for the filing of another civil action against the same parties involving the same cause of action. O pwede naman niyang i-refile. This time, siguruhin niya na that the summon will be served. Ayun, pwede pala. Another one, that the civil action was dismissed. On what ground? Because the court has no jurisdiction over the subject matter. What? Well, the case is involving what? Action revindicatoria. Huh? More than one year had elapsed since the complainant, the plaintiff, was deprived of his position. So, and the issue is about ownership, recovery of ownership. So, action revindicatoria. It was filed before the Metropolitan Trial Court in Mandaluyong City. It was dismissed by the court immediately because the court has no jurisdiction over the subject matter. Question. May, may the plaintiff file another civil action, another action, action revindicatoria, this time with the regional trial court in Mandaluyong City? Yes, but how about the principle that once a case is dismissed on the ground, that the defendant filed a motion to dismiss the plaintiff, cannot refile it again? Well, that is the general rule. One of the exceptions is if the ground for dismissal is that the court do not have jurisdiction over the subject matter. All that the plaintiff should do is to file the civil action with the, with the, in court which has appropriate jurisdiction or in court which has competent jurisdiction. O yari, pwede palang i-refile. Well, another one is that uh, the venue, that venue is improperly laid. It is a personal action. Personal action. Well, the plaintiff is residing in Marikina while the defendant is uh, in Quezon City. A personal action, collection of a sum of money. It was filed in Paranaque City. All right? So, so, the defendant filed an answer. And in his answer, he raised an affirmative defense that vin venue is improperly laid. If you are the trial judge, is it proper for you? To dismiss the case on the ground of on the ground that venue is improperly laid. Yes, I repeat, this is not a ground anymore for a motion to dismiss, but it could be the basis of an affirmative defense in the in the defendant's answer, and still it is a ground for the court to dismiss. It is still a basis for the court to dismiss the civil action. Not dismiss, but may the civil action be refiled? Yes. Despite the dismissal, the civil action may still be refiled. Where? In the court with appropriate venue. It may be in Marikina City or in Quezon City. Or how about if the plaintiff has no legal capacity to sue? Who filed the civil action? It was filed in the name of what? Ex Sarisari Store. Or of a minor without any guardian or an imbecile without any guardian. So dismiss. Dismiss. Bakit na dismiss? Nag-file ng motion to dismiss? Hindi naman. It was an affirmative. There was an answer. Raising an affirmative defense 
that, that, that there is no cause of action because the plaintiff has no legal capacity. So it was dismissed. So what will you do? Sari Sari store. You can, you can institute another civil action involving the same parties, but this time it should be in the name of the owner of the Sari Sari store or that the minor is now represented by his legal guardian, the parents, or if there are no legal parents, then a guardian. If there is no guardian, then a guardian to be appointed by the court during the trial. O sino mag-file? The plaintiff. Plaintiff, ikaw mag-file ng guardian to be appointed by the court guardian of the minor for the purpose of this case. The pending case, guardian, latest pendencia, or during the pendency of the case. So, pwede pang ibuha buhay, and it can be refiled. Another one is that there is another action between the same parties to the same cause. Right? Of course, this is a ground for dismissal. Right? So, that case was dismissed. Can it be refiled? Yes, it can be refiled. Why? Suppose that one of the civil action, or suppose that the two actions were dismissed. What? what how? How? Up at the instance of the parties. Meron silang notice of dismissal. Kapwa sila nag-notice. It can be revived. It can be revived. Okay? And of course, if the pleading states no cause of action, it is the pleading states no cause of action, it can be refiled later on. Limbawa, wala pa namang cause of action ngayon. Premature, but it was filed. So it was dismissed on that ground. Hindi naman motion to dismiss. But simply what? An answer raising an affirmative defense of the, that there is no cause of action or 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 there was a demurrer to evidence filed after the plaintiff presented its evidence so the civil action was dismissed can it be refiled yes it can be refiled remember a demurrer to evidence is actually a motion to dismiss based on the insufficiency of the evidence not because the civil action is dismissed it cannot be refiled anymore it can be refiled. Remember that the dismissal is only for insufficiency of evidence. Or another one, what, what, is the, what is the basis why the civil action was dismissed? Because the condition precedent has not been complied with. Meaning the filing of the case is premature. There is no cause of action yet. Why? Because the obligation is a conditional obligation. It is subject to a condition but the condition has not been complied with and thus there is no cause of action actually why should you why did you file the civil action it was dismissed tuloy bakit na dismissed because the defendant filed his answer and in his answer he raised an affirmative defense that a condition precedent has not been complied with the civil action is, is, is a premature. So it was dismissed. Can it be refiled? Yes. Kailan mo i-refile? Well, if the condition has already, if the condition precedent has already been complied with. Oh, it's just ganun pala yan. I-comply mo muna. Ikaw kasi. Hindi, hindi mo naman kinukomply. Masyado kang nagmabadali. Alright. Now, if the defendant Resist, resist uh, an affirmative defense of payment, fraud. Ano ang mga affirmative defense niya? You are the trial judge. What will you do? Can you conduct a preliminary hearing? You should. The court may conduct preliminary hearing on the on the defendant's affirmative defense if no motion to dismiss was filed. Affirmative defense niya eh. Anong affirmative defense mo? That there was already payment. The court may conduct a summary hearing for the purpose of determining 
whether or not there was really payment. Or, ano pang grant mo? Prescription. Oh, medyo mahirap. The court will conduct summary hearing for the purpose of determining kung talagang meron ng prescription. Okay, ah, baka malito na naman kayo. Bakit naman sinabi mong prescription a ground an affirmative defense? Anong, ano yan? E, duplicara yan. Yung motion, ay ah, yung no, the court has no jurisdiction, that there is that the court has no jurisdiction, that uh, prescription or statute of limitation or barred by res judicata, it can be invoked as a ground for a motion to dismiss. It can also be invoked as an affirmative defense. Doubly karayan, puso sa, eh, sa Pilipinas na balingbing. Mas maraming kara ang balingbing. Maraming iskinita. Buti pa yung Chris. Eh, Chris, dalawa lang talaga ang sharp edge noon. Eh. Eh, yun, mas mabuti. Dalawa yung balingbing. Marami. Parang lima, etc. Eh, yung mga politiko natin, di ba? Ganon. <laughs> Ganon yun. But uh, take note that the, the court may conduct a summary hearing for the purpose of determining an affirmative defense. Kaya nga nagbanggit kanita, kanina tayo, do not file a motion in court to conduct summary hearing on your affirmative defense. That is a prohibited pleading. Bakit? Kasi yung rules of court mismo, inutosan na yung, judge, yung court. The rules of court already required judges. Of course, hindi naman mandatory. The court may conduct a summary hearing. Hayaan mo na si court because he may conduct a summary hearing. Do not file a motion for the conduct of a summary hearing because it is a prohibited motion. Ah, antayin mo na lang si judge. Alam ni judge yan. Pag nag-file, sabi ni judge, ay, nako, ito na naman, mga pala utos. Utos ng utos. Yeah. Alright, so, next time, ay, ano, baka wala tayo sa Sabado na nga pala, oh. <laughs> nga pala, eh. eh. Holy Week na. Okay, respeto na lang natin yung mga relihiyon. Ay, ako naman, di, wala akong pakialam kaya, sa mga Holy Week. Kasi kaya lang, Pilipinas, eh, Catholic or even in other Christian groups, inag-o-observe ng ganyan. Pero mayroong mga ibang Christian groups na hindi naman nag, nag-o-observe. Kaya lang, in general, nag-o-observe. Ako nga, nagtatanong ako minsan, sa totoo lang, idanot no, kung masasagot ninyo, Kung bakit pag Pasko, lagi kayong nagsiselebrate ng December 25? Bakit? Eh bakit yung kamatayan ni Jesus Christ, walang date, laging Biyernes Santo, Huwebes Santo, Biyernes Santo, Sabado, Linggo. O bakit ganon? Al- alam nyo, I'm not a Catholic anymore. Tinanong ko na yung pastor namin, pero biro lang. O pastor, paano yan? Natawa na lang siya eh. Pero ako, yung tan- ako naman iba eh. If you believe in God, eh, hayaan mo na. Maniwala ka na lang. <laughs> hayaan mo na. Kasi wala namang perfect na religious group. Wala. Kahit sino yan. Eh, syempre, pag nag yung Christian sa ka-Islam, eh, sabihin ng Islam, ako oh, kami ang perfect. Wala. Pareho lang yan. Kaya lang, ang kadalasan ng mga scholars ng Christianity, Islam, Judaism, ayaw Pumayag na hindi sila perfect, sila daw. Eh, eh, okay lang, kasi ayaw nilang pumayag. Eh, lahat na yung mga mali, yun ang pananaw ko. Eh, papano yung religious group where I belong? Mga evangelical Christian. May mali ba? Meron din. Iba't nandiyan ka. Eh, kasi pag lumipat ka sa ibang grupo, meron na namang mali kasi nandun ka na. Halimbawa, nag-Islam ka kasi nagharap ka yung perfect na religion. The Islam. Hindi na perfect yung Islam. Bakit? Nandiyan ka eh. Ikaw, hindi ka perfect eh. Yun ang totoo. Kaya ako hindi ako particular sa relihiyon, nagdidebate-debate. Ikasalanan ba ni Mr. X kung siya ay ipinanganak sa North Korea? Hindi siya Muslim, hindi siya Christian. 
hindi siya uh, membro ng Judaism, kasalanan ba niya? O pag sinabi mong kasalanan niya, nako, ayaw ni Diyos ng ganang ganyan, na magkukundin tayo ng kapwa. Hindi natin alam. There, there is a purpose, bakit siya pinanganak doon sa, sa North Korea? Hindi, hindi mo mapipigilan yan, yun ang gusto ng Diyos. Pero pag nagdebate na yung mga religious group, ah hindi, silang tama, ay eh, bahala kayo. <laughs> Kung hindi ako nag-aangkin, kami tama. Walang mali. May mali lahat. Ang perfect, ang God lang ang perfect. Kaya wala na muna tayo sa Sabado nga pala. Of course, we have to respect all religious group naman. Wala naman tayong pakialam kung ano. Ako naman eh. Di. Holy Week naman for the Christian it Christian group. Then be a Christian. Whatever denomination you you belong. Meron namang Christian denomination na wala, hindi nag-observe ng ganyan. Eh, okay lang din. Alright, so maraming salamat sa, oh, si Dr. Lim sa nag-o-offer pala, nag-message sa akin. Uh, nandito si, ano eh, uh, nandito nakita kita dito. Inag-text ako kay, nag-message ako kay Dr. Lim na pwede pala dito, i-delete lang. Yung pala, i-conflict eh, pala kay Judge, schedule ni Judge John sa March 31. Saka na lang, pagkakataon na sana ni Dr. Lim eh, 3 uh, hours on taxation. Well anyway, donatory, mag-offer pa rin naman yan. Mahirap lang talaga kay Dr. Lim. Alam mo, alam nyo, napaka-busy yan eh. Alam nyo naman, saan yan? Lahat ng review center nandun. <laughs> Pero sinisikap pa rin niya na makapag-share dito. Alright, so good night. Maraming salamat. Thank you.